everyone, this is Sonali. Thank you all for carving out some time for attending today's webinar on the episode 9 of the Business X Learning Series, Invest, Scale and Value. To all the attendees out there, please type in any questions you might have in the Q&A section and we'll try to answer as many as possible at the end of the session. I would now like to welcome our speaker, Mr. Gaurav Maria, Chairman of the Franchise India Group. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Sonali. And welcome, friends, and welcome to the ninth edition of uh, Business X series. This series was started for covering three points in businesses, especially, I would say, small and mid-sized businesses, because that's a focus of Business X and the Franchise India Group. Uh, the idea was to really cover three parts. One was investing. How do you invest? Second is scale. How do you scale your businesses? And third was value. So every week we come and talk about these subjects. Today, I'll probably spend time between uh, covering my what I've done in terms of the, uh, in the value side. I mean, we've done two episodes earlier. How do you value your business? Why it is so important to value your business? But I also talk about exit. And I'll let, so let me put some perspective why I chose these two to get together because I feel that this is a very critical time. This is very, very critical time in where we are living, especially small and medium enterprise, uh, because I feel that the impact of this changes and this whole downturn and and pandemic and things like that has impacted the most uh, i would say the small and medium enterprises especially now because uh, the fundamental of this impact is because not only the overall consumption has gone down because the small and medium enterprises normally run on a smaller chest they have a lesser cash reserves than larger companies uh, historically have much more treasure second being a public company sometimes because they have a lot of uh, uh, value to leverage, you know, themselves. And, and I think if even if the bankers have to really sport, come and sport, they would like to support the larger companies. The smaller companies become more vulnerable uh, at this stage because of, uh, you know, run out of cash flows, uh, their treasures, uh, whatever reserves are there is finished. They need liquidity to bring back the cycle. And, the, and there is also a very, very big uh, pressure on their consumption cycle, which means that they were, even if you are in business, you are doing 20, 30% of your business and so on and so forth. So at this tiring times, uh, what is going to happen? And we'll talk about that, that if this is a situation arising in companies, what should be the strategies for them and what they should really look out? But let's set some perspective in terms of why valuation and why valuation is so important for companies to get it done. And uh, one of the areas with business X and this equity really works uh, is helping companies to value themselves. And surprisingly, in India, the only less than 1% businesses are valued. About 30 million businesses exist and less than 1% are valued. But let me let me some clear some doubts of the whole valuation because whenever a lot of young people come to us and, and the smaller medium companies come to us, their perception on valuation is very different. And I can tell you over my experience over many, many years, the only value uh, the firm can value only if ultimately it delivers earnings. That's the fundamental. If it, you're not delivering earnings, you're not having strong bottom lines to be delivered, then it is not. If you're early stage companies, you might take earnings, you might define and discount your earnings for next three years, four years, five years. But eventually it is all going to be, the value is going to be built on earnings. And a lot of uh, misperception is there in the market where people would say that oh, because of your, your faster go to market and things, all this is fine. This is all built up. But eventually, how much earning you will be able to deliver would create a value. The incentric value of an asset is determined by the cash flows you expect from an asset to generate over its life and how uncertain you feel about these cash flows, which means that, uh, you know, how certain or uncertain these cash flows are would also determine the deviation of valuation. Valuation normally is an art. It's not a science. It's a, it's a lot of people think that it's a, <clears throat> uh, it's a science. It's a, it's, a, it's an actually an art, you know, it's, and especially these days, and I think value would be determined by uh, who's looking at your company and, and what stage they are in and so on and so forth. So a lot of things would change in the, in the valuation stage. I always say that the valuation sees from, I mean, you have, if you really have to design valuation, and especially in current times, you always see from the eyes of the investor, how he's going to look at your business model. And valuation cycles also keep changing because uh, like if you are in a, in a situation these days where obviously you will not get the right kind of valuation which you expected pre-COVID. Uh, so, and you have to be realistic on that. You have to be very, very realistic. And I see a lot of uh, challenges happening in the in the deals which we had on market and we were representing, we're not able to conclude because of the unexpectation at either sides. Uh, the buyer side is unexpectedly looking at a much lower valuations 
on the other side the the seller side we also facing a lot of problems because of that so a lot of transaction while it looks like that this is this is actually getting a a platform for for m and a but it's not really happening because i think the the expectation at both sides is is not there so uh, i mean i i feel that at what valuation also if even if you're not really looking at getting into uh, selling your businesses but valuation still would be very important because it gives a lot of insight for for a companies which have historically not really looked at their businesses much in depth uh, i i know a lot of businesses when we started doing this exercise we found that uh, the entrepreneur while he now wants to get into that uh, but uh, <clears throat> but never has designed a business model which was ready to be transferred or or sold or a, or a, when you start doing the whole valuation exercise we find that there are a lot of missing links so typically a, a, a readiness for a company to really even look at an exit or a partial sale or something of that nature would mean anything from a 6 months to 18 months or 2 years kind of a life cycle so you can it's also very important that you start this exercise if you start this exercise it's much easier for you to really discover your own business and put things in place and uh, so another very important area for valuation is the valuation models are always quantitative where valuation becomes an objective fundamentally is that we we always wanted to achieve some certain number to it and and we push up the business models to and i think most of the times especially for startups the valuations are are done that but not of things have to be seen in the in the whole uh, balance sheet you what kind of uh, assets if you hold both tangible intangible what is the liabilities you are holding on what is the kind of financial matrix you have and but in my simple terms i drive drive it on a sas principle sas principle uh, sas means as what is the strategic value is sitting in the business what is an asset sitting in the business and what are the subscribers in the business between these three things i will try to drive that sometimes i only find two uh, sometimes i only find Uh, one in the business and sometimes all three are available so depending on where this is uh, your valuation would be tagged up but a lot of questions one has to really ask when you looking at valuation how predictable for your future cash flows are and this is where the real answers would come in and uh, how you are going to improve your margins and profitability here i did a session uh, last time called uh, growth versus scale you should please go out and see that a lot of times uh, uh, you know companies which are now classic old style companies are very growth centric companies where which means that when you when you grow your revenues you grow or you also grow and uh, you know put more resources in that is very directly proportionate uh, but the new age companies more technology companies actually scale where your revenues might grow exponentially but you don't deploy the same number of resources uh, so so it's is is a big shift so which means that the margins after 3 to 4 5 years uh would significantly improve in the scale up companies so how do you really shift your business models to become scale up and hence you will be able to improve your margin rather on the contrary i have seen the classic businesses uh, uh which are looking good at this stage in 3 to 4 years because of inflation the cost rising but the revenues not able to rise in the same manner they actually had a imbalance in terms of their profitability margins and so on so forth and a lot of companies which were very exciting at one point in time actually have started failing uh one point in time you know so because the the business model and margins erode uh as they as they grow in in i think so how do you really shift the business model so a lot of these uh, uh businesses which were which were uh, do it yourself businesses uh, technology companies which create their own multiplier uh we actually would do much better in the in the performance another thing is how would be the sustenance and stability in the performance would come how do you really ensure that next 4 5 years you would have a lot of sustenance and stability in the business uh what is happening to the founding team uh, what is the founding team telling you and how strong that founding team outside even if you take the core founder out what is the else the founding team sitting there and how strong that it and who is your uh, competition inside and outside and their influence and threat to the business so what is all this is telling you this would all uh, make uh, define that how strong your business model would be then once you have done that then there are some practices which we really look at um, from a valuation view point we look at multiples uh, and and there are ways of looking at different uh, companies at different structures how do you really do that we also look at your profitability uh, adjustments and we also look at uh, you know a market valuation uh, so what is the market telling you which means that a comparative uh, understanding of what other businesses would be have been sold on the same price especially in the small medium enterprise that becomes a big challenge you know in when you're doing a companies uh, in a large companies or listed companies there are a lot of uh, uh, comparisons you can really bring in but when you're doing a transaction for especially for a small and medium enterprise 
this becomes a very difficult uh, because you don't have a lot of data points available to compare the valuation structures. So large part of the valuation would still remain around the multiples and the profitability of the business model. And as I said, the SaaS principle, uh, what needs to be done. So these are uh, very important points when you look at uh, the valuation. Uh, I see a lot of people who are joined in. So if you if you have questions, uh, keep asking your questions on a on a Q and A box. So we will take up uh, more questions this time because we have done this series about uh, nine series. If you have any questions from even earlier ones, please keep writing on that. I think I'll be more than happy to do that. And even if you want to really ask a question about particularly about your business which means that how this uh, is right for your business at what stage you need to value or look at a, a transformation or a exit or anything which can which can help uh, your business at this stage please go out and write and give in it i will take maybe another 10 minutes on discussing on the exit side and then i will come back to taking a lot of questions if you are available so let's now get into the today's uh, discussion the violation i've uh, done two full uh, detailed uh, episodes so you can really go out and our business x uh, facebook page they're all available there so you can really review uh, in detail how you look at valuation but now let's get into the whole uh, exit side so exit i think the one of the most important aspect for exit is uh, why exit you know and why should companies look at uh, exiting and and why it is so important because uh, i feel that <clears throat> um, it's a uh, it's you know, so I'll give you some data, which I was doing some research and, and found that uh, earlier it was number was very low, but uh, this is not so much from India, but more from markets like US. Uh, at this stage, small and medium enterprise is as high as given a choice, but 60% would like to exit the business, right? This is only I'm talking about the data from a small and medium enterprise, more, more uh, in US. Uh, but US is a very close reflection of what uh, doing it because the permutation of small, medium, enterprises to large companies is very similar to what Indian system is about 97 98%. So this number becomes very, very high and very clear reasons are it's, it's, it's the circumstances that clear the situations here. And you also have to understand uh, the, some countries, the business is much better than India because uh, they are government support. There are a lot of aid coming from government. They're putting 50, 60% of their salaries of their employees and things like that. But when you look at Indian businesses, uh, the number can be even more bigger. Uh, you know, I can tell you uh, FNB industry, uh, hospitality industry, travel industry, of uh, things with these industries. If you just pick up the asset and just put it on that thing and say, would you like to sell the business? Uh, I can I can tell you every, almost everybody is looking at it, even at the haircut. Uh, so even people who are, I mean, I've been called by a, a company out of Hyderabad who's just opened their microbrewery and I think in January or something like that and they want to really exit their business and they're looking for a major haircut. So things of that nature is, is already around us. Uh, and I feel that uh, the mistake a lot of uh, small and medium enterprise people would do is that uh, they would either wait for this whole cycle to get over and then see recovery. And I can tell you already, if you are in a business which is impacted and every business is impacted, but if it is a, I would say mid to high impact kind of a situation, then you are already six months into this which means when you open up a business, you will need fresh liquidity to be going into the business, which means that you need to recapitalize the business. And I think from the reaching out to the pre-COVID days uh, would take you another uh, nine months to 12 month cycle, which means that you will have a nine month to 12 month, uh, you know, uh, more capital to attach. So in these scenarios, uh, if people have little bit of liquidity left, uh, if they go and invest and take that call to go that long and be not having enough cash flow and thing, they would get can get into much bigger serious crisis of complete liquidation. And I feel, and that's exactly what the risk is at this stage in small and medium enterprises. So it would be very important to understand where you are and if where which stage you are in and what call you need to take and when. And that's very important. And that would really really benchmark uh, entire thing. And we'll talk about the the whole larger timing, but I'm talking more from a current scenario, how the timing is looking like. But normally, uh, when when people want to really sell the business or exit the business or uh, find another buyer, they normally have peaked out. So they have really reached out to peaked out. They feel that they, they cannot uh, do whatever they needs to be done. Second, there is a bigger opportunity available, which means orbit change can be done, but uh, they don't have capital to take that next 
orbit change, which means uh, you have much bigger opportunities out there, but you don't have that entire thing. Third is very opportunist way, which means more selling for value. You feel that somebody comes and gives you a good value and offers you a good price and you, you want to really sell for a value. That's also very <clears throat> good. This happens most of the times in the early stage of consolidation. Uh, when the consolidation starts, like these days, a lot of consolidation would happen in, say, edutech. Of uh, you know, already we are seeing uh, companies being acquired. There is a lot in health, uh, doing in health tech. Again, Reliance acquired one company. So a lot of these early stage businesses, which are which are what I call the new new disruptions in the market, uh, when the consolidation starts happening, they are the first to be picked up. So a lot of that has already started. Uh, another thing, which is which means that never fight the elephant. Which means if you have uh, <clears throat> uh, companies in a which a much larger player has entered. Uh, then don't you have to fight out it. You need to really collaborate and and a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, equity uh, based uh, M and A uh, deals would happen. Like say for example, Oyo at one point time wanted to get into co working, and they inquired Innovate. So these kind of acquisitions are very very clearly seen that when the when the much larger player wants to enter the space, it's best to be uh, you, if you have a business which fits into their requirement, it's best to approach them and and try to look at it. And you also, in some cases, if you want to really expand the larger consumer base and you feel that there is a, somebody who is more strategic, has much more wider distribution reach or something like that, then also there is a, a call for uh, uh, exit. So, but in today's time, I think it's a much different scenario. And it is a very different scenario. This time, the scenario is more around a situation where you are in. And I think the biggest situation is, is predominantly capitalization of businesses. A lot of people would like to sell their businesses, not that their business will not good, bad, but the future capitalization uh, required to uh, do that, uh, they might not have, or they don't want to invest into businesses. So I, I feel that a lot of that is going to happen. And one has to really be very, very sharp and very quick to understand uh, is, is your business, uh, you know, if you don't see the business going to the next level, maybe this is a time to really take a serious call to exit the business. Uh, or some part of the business. So I'm advising these days companies who are coming to me and let's say there was a chain with restaurants have come to me and they want to really look at uh, doing it. So I've picked up about 40% of their assets and say, let's sell these 40% of assets. It will give us enough liquidity and structure to keep up the 60% balance. So those kind of strategies would work. So I feel that at this stage, rather than leveraging more uh, uh, companies, uh, especially who are already leveraged, uh, leveraging more is a dangerous idea. Uh, and also uh, overly forecasting that you will be able to turn around faster is also a bad idea. So if you're not able to see clearly 12 months sustenance, uh, then I think exit would make a big important sense, partial or a full exit. And we'll talk about uh, uh, that more. So if you are looking to really sell the business, uh, uh, I divide this into four parts. Uh, one is uh, uh, timing. How do you really understand the timing of what is the right time and when is to be done? Second, what is a perceived value? What do you value you really see and, and put it uh, as a firm mind that this is a perceived value I want to really go in. Looking at the circumstances, how do you approach that? Uh, it's also very important. How do you approach the valuation? And what are the ways of doing uh, the valuation in time? So uh, and valuation is just not about numbers. It's also based on uh, the perceived value is also based on multiple things. I, I think the softer side of things would also make a lot of sense. Uh, what is your customer telling about your company? You know, that's a very, very big important part of it. How you retaining your customers, that's a very important part of it. What is your value proposition uh, overall as a, as a company? What are the, your, you know, employees and commitment with the employees uh, available in the company? What is, what is the commitment level you have with your suppliers? All that is, all that has bundled together and to create uh, uh, the valuation. <clears throat> now, from a timing viewpoint, I think uh, this is very critical to define, and that would really come from your self-assessment of uh, where you are positioned, you are positioned in your liquidity and, and your financial position and, and a structure, uh, because that's uh, very important. So first you start with, the first step you have to really start with how much amount of money you really need. Uh, if for reasons you need to, need to run the business fully, or still continue to manage that, what kind of money you really require from today to the entire thing, and what is the availability of that money. And if the answer is you don't have that money, then very clearly you need to decide the second point is that 
would would you have courage enough to really go and still lead this business or you have fatigued enough or you don't want to do that then obviously the answer second answer would come that you want to take the managerial role or uh, of managing the company or no you know i've done few exits uh, purely not because the business was not good or anything but i felt i cannot manage the business uh, because i had no time of uh, doing that so my call was not really more financially but it was i think i had very clear lee that i don't have any management capability of that business uh, at that particular time and uh, because i was pretty occupied in that business so one has to really see from these two perspectives one is a more financial call where you need to really see what is your financial call and second is a management call uh, if you see what these uh, two things and uh, i've not seen i've not said management uh, ownership is very different you can still be owner you can still be part of a equity share holding and that i think but management control needs a lot of time commitment and 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 this and financial is a financial commitment these two are very clear answers one has to really find out so first is uh, uh you know you need to really see what kind of money you need to earn on that you need to set your timing and on that timing you need to really set uh, uh you know uh, what time frame you are looking at and i feel that if a, a good exit has to be planned then you have to really give anything from a, a 3 months to 6 months uh, life cycle and uh, and if you if you feel that by that time you need to see the company is intact is not further eroded it's not losing its customers faster than you know and things of that nature has to be really controlled so you need to really see that between 3 to 6 months you are able to uh, find that then you need to on the manager side you need to really see that how much time you would be able to put in the business and even if you want a new buyer comes in and he wants you to be part of it for some time and then also you need to really define your time frame that what kind of time you want to give and what is the value of that time you want really ask for that so that's also very clearly doing it third a uh, fourth point is would be that you need to really understand how much ownership you want to really hold in the business you know so most of the time if you are managing control you sell a small part of the equity then you need to manage that business for a longer period but if you sell large part of your equity uh, then uh, then how's your ownership in structure a lot of people sell uh, in phases with a very clear uh, guidelines which means that i would sell say maybe to begin with 60% of the company with a pre aggregate value that they would acquire the balance 40 at a, a certain benchmark and till that certain benchmark i might continue to be in a managerial role uh, to manage the business and performance sometimes uh, investors would look hold you of accountable for the performance for the time you are going to be there because there you had the historically presented the data that this company would go from this to entire thing and this might change your equity pattern which means that i they give or a good companies would give you incentive for for a better performance say if i sell a company at 60% value 60% of the company at a certain value and balance 40% is agreed in the next two years for a certain value and if i overperform that i might have a chances that i get much better price agreed on the 40% half but on the other side if i have reduced not performed that business then i would get a much lower uh, value on that so you need to really understand how your ownership placed i normally would advise my clients to create a fixed value rather than creating a variance because variance can go in favor of you uh, and it can also go against you i have seen a lot of people who have done that kind of deals have actually more so the times um, 80 90% of times actually gone a lesser value that's why most of the buyers would like to exercise that but from if i am representing the seller i would say try to be on a fixed value get a get a fair value right now and agree on that and just stick around that payment options also when has to really clearly see what are the payments option uh, what are the uh, um you know uh, what are you going to get out of this uh, uh, in the payment cycle what uh, sometimes there are partial payment cycles how you're secured on that and uh, and sometimes you are stock options and stock options are great when the business is the other company which is buying from you and you're getting a stock and this stock is going to go and how is your ability to liquidate that stock also that's very important and i've seen these days like pre covid there were some companies which have actually did just pure stock deals and these stock deals were good because these companies were going on a very very high valuation and uh, imagine post covid this valuation is eroded like say oyo oyo was a very high valuation if the stock uh, deal was done by oyo it was a great thing because the company's valuation was going very high but now with this happening and especially what happens in hospitality the, there would be a significant erosion of valuation which means that if i did a stock value at a certain level say if some oyo bought my company at 200 crores pure stock uh, business and but now their valuation going down your valuation can be finished 
So you need to really see where you are and how patient you are to hold that cycle. It might come back, uh, but or then when the real IPO happens, then you will be able to do the liquidation. But what is your what is your entire thing? So in this case also, I always advise past, par, uh, partial cash, partial stock options. Stock options get you upside, uh, can also get you a good upside, but cash would get you some liquidity for whatever you want to do. So you cash out some partial cash out and partial can be this. Multiple other options are there for companies which have already gone and done multiple rounds and so on and so forth. For them, IPO can be a good opportunity to uh, liquidate. Strategic acquisition is very good. Uh, most of the times now, particularly in these times, I would see more strategic acquisition, which means that same people from the same industry would buy. Uh, people who are want to see you as a market entry option, uh, that can be a great option. So I was say uh, operating in North and I don't have anything in South and there was something selling, I can buy that, can give me a faster market entry. Uh, consolidation uh, position, uh, getting your market share consolidation can not be an option. So, but industry buyouts would be a very, very clear sense to me at this moment. Uh, there can be also a lot of diversification from large companies to look at a particular category and they might like to consolidate as a, uh, a space because say if a particular company wants to enter SMB. Uh, now the chips are down, a lot of operators are down in the stage, but if somebody comes with a lot of liquidity and a lot of cash, can really consolidate a lot of business together. So this can be a good opportunity. Financial investors uh, normally uh, come on the stage where you have a very strong three to four years, five years uh, uh, value uh, space and, and or, or the bottom lines are already very interesting. Most of the times people don't want to sell it at this hour, but financial investors are also there. Sometimes you want to really sell only partial equity. Um, somebody would take a, a minority in the, in the, the company. Uh, that also is a is an option. A lot of times that happens. That is what uh, most of the structured uh, uh, investments would do. I mean, they would pick up uh, smaller equity in the companies. And the final, which is the which is most time happens in smaller businesses and uh, you know and medium businesses because they're not able to find any of the above. They would get into liquidation. So that uh, uh, is most of the time you're just selling off the assets and whatever you want to recover of the assets uh, uh, really uh, comes out. So these are things happening around and I, I feel that this is going to be a very big pressure time in next uh, two quarters, uh, starting from September to March 31st, 2021. I feel that a lot of companies would come in a tremendous amount of pressure because I think this was a holding time. This was a pause time from March to say August. This pause time is getting over. Uh, now people would come have to come out and really start answering a lot of things which they were not answering. And when they start looking at their businesses, uh, the business would have changed in five, six months. Uh, so I think uh, for, for a lot of people really have to, they have to really look at their businesses and ask realistically, is there an opportunity to revive and sustain? Revive and sustain both uh, is very demanding. And if you feel that you don't have that answer, uh, uh, don't wait too much, uh, get your business valued, uh, find the right kind of buyer or approach the right buyer uh, through a consulting firm like us, or you can even go to a maybe industry player who you know who is better off, you know, and would probably have interest on your asset and you can really uh, create kind of a uh, structure with him. So this is what was today. Uh, every week we take up one subject and talk about uh, that. I will be more than happy to hear if you have any particular topic which you want us to cover. Uh, largely Business X is a, is a platform which helps people connect uh, opportunities connect with investors. Uh, we are a resale platform where we would bring in uh, companies uh, who want to sell, value your business and then sell the business. So any of these requirements you have, you can reach out to Sonali and she leads uh, with me in Business X. So I will now uh, bring in Sonali. If there is any questions for me, I will be more than happy to answer. Thank you so much, Gaurav, sir, for another wonderful session and for your unique insights. Uh, we have quite a few questions lined up with us. Um, yeah, so the first question we have is from Mr. Devadat uh, Das. He's asking, for a startup or newly started business, does the historical performance matter? What should be the key drivers for valuation of these businesses? Startup, there would be no historical background. Uh, so they have to look at a, a, a newly startup business has to, there would be no historical performance. Uh, historical performance can come from the industry peers. I mean, if you have similar kind of industry while uh, uh, peers, uh, uh, if you have, and if you have 
something which is very compelling which you can clearly say from a consumer demand viewpoint or a, or a, or any kind of a, a clear visibility of the future cash flows uh, that would be the big driver uh, i think uh, most of the startups have come in from mindset of uh, disruption second uh, consumer shift uh, how you are able to sh shift the customer wherever they are using something and they would shift to you and how fast that shift can happen or they are able to create a new customer base which never existed but there was a inherent uh, demand which you can perceive to demonstrate and this say like people would use this in coming time like uh, uh, zoom was a classic example it was it was a platform created for a future consumption which has come even more faster than people started using right uh, but it is clearly predicted for a, a future way of uh, doing anything any interaction so it was a platform which was for a, clearly designed for future consumption but it fast speeded it and adaptability and uh, you know uh, that is very very clear so anything which you have which can demonstrate that would create a uh, as i said i mean end of the day it all is going to be boiled down to uh, economic performance of the business and that uh, you need to somewhere demonstrate startup rather it is a it is it is better for startups because uh, people don't ask the historic data they actually go for the future projection and that's why startups get easy money uh, sometimes the businesses which are already running they find it very difficult to justify investors because investors would go with their historic data and historic data would sometimes doesn't match the future they are trying to say i mean if you're growing the last 5 years by 8 9% and you suddenly come and tell the investors you want to grow by 30% 35% you know they want to buy it uh, unless and there is significant uh, way or change of business you have already done so startups i think has a much greater chance to really demonstrate that another question on very similar lines is how important is valuation for early stage startups to investors really give it importance while deciding whether to invest or not yeah, yeah. so investors i mean startups or uh, scale up companies startup and scale up is different uh, startup is something which is it's an ideation stage has to see is commercial success a uh, scale up is something which is has seen the commercial success and now wants to go to the next level next orbit of growth i would feel that this time is not for startups uh, while startups interesting ideas would always be welcome and always good uh, but this is a time for scale ups this is a very good time for scale ups right. uh, the next question we have is valuation of all businesses would certainly be less in this covid phase should i still get my business valued or wait for things to get better and then get it valued very good question uh, and a very very good question so you should get valuation done right now uh, <clears throat> but you you don't have to take this five months of performance uh, your valuation should be done from a pre covid uh, numbers and uh, and you need to keep this pause phase and do a little bit of a cash flow correction when you do the overall uh, valuation structure so i will take the numbers of uh, february uh, or last year structures and create the valuation on that and uh, and unless and until i reach that same level of number i'll keep that period as a pause phase uh, so and if there is some significant uh, cash burn in this period uh, can be taken into the accountability on the final uh, valuation but i don't want to take numbers current numbers would be ridiculous to take numbers Uh, the next question we have is how often should i get my uh, business value generally i think you should the valuation should be done one time in in the structure and then you need to revise that valuation analyzed and visit your valuation uh, whenever they you see a critical change happening critical change would be industry change uh, you know or uh, any kind of a significant competition landscape changed Uh, or uh, some some micro or a macro dynamics in the econo economy is telling you to really see your valuation right uh, so the next question we have is uh, the person saying my business has faced major loss during this time and i am not able to understand how to go forward if i plan to take an exit why would someone buy a business all, uh, which is already incurring loss so this is a uh, yeah so this is good question so fundamentally i i i want to really define that uh, today almost uh, if i have to really put general figure 70% businesses would have been i mean current time looking at the current numbers month on month cycle uh, would look uh, npas non performing assets uh, and uh, and 30% would still be profitable i mean if they are uh, which i 
I doubt. So uh, if it is a short term impact, then I would again say pause period. We don't want to relook at it. While we can soften the valuation, I'll do the pre-COVID valuation numbers. I'll soften it up uh, so that I give that breather for somebody to who's are buying it can cover this uh, pause period. But I don't want to discount my valuation too much because uh, doing it. But if it is a if if it is a long term impact of loss, then also every asset is ready to sell. You know, I call it a profitable assets uh, have a very different approach. Non profitable assets have a different approach. In non profitable assets, again, I will have to go deeper on the SaaS principle. What is the strategic value? Is there a strategic value? Sometimes the location is a value. Uh, say you are a retail, then location itself is a value. Your uh, maybe you are sitting on some older rentals, which can give me arbitrage uh, on that, or something else which is very important. Then what are the assets there in the business, and what is the subscribers? Which means that uh, uh, you know how many subscribers are consumer? What are the consumer base? And I can I sell something else to that consumer base? So all the deeper things one has to really understand. Uh, but uh, but I feel that if there is some businesses, and I see every single day, uh, you know, uh, businesses coming to us and and which are losing money, and uh, and and entrepreneurs are emotionally drained, uh, so to say, because they they one emotionally invested, so obviously they these times they're emotionally drained, and uh, uh, but uh, this is this is a time to detach yourself, and uh, and uh, exit uh, businesses. In one business, particularly, I stretched it uh, long, uh, and that caused a big, big uh, losses for us uh, because uh, I felt that if, if I I do it, then I lose what I've invested. Uh, but eventually, I had to. Uh, so if you if you just carry it up for a longer period, more you you multiply your losses, and that's not good. That's not good because then especially if you have other businesses which start damaging the other businesses, or even your time, because if if you have to even write off that business and start something else, uh, maybe that's better because you can put some productive energy in there uh, and look at something much more value, uh, meaningful rather than investing on something which is not making any sense for you. Absolutely. Um, so the next question we have is a personalized uh, question from Mr. Mukundan. He's saying one of my tech companies is three years young. It has a revenue of 10 CR. It's profit making and has a 30% EBITDA, all from one customer. And I need to scale up now. No debt, no IP per se. Can a ballpark pre-money valuation of five times the revenue or 20 times the EBITDA over the next three years projection, is it reasonable? Yeah, yeah, so please, uh, uh, absolutely. I, I, I think if, if what, if either you have done it yourself or somebody has given you, but numbers are absolutely right, four to five times revenue or a 15% to 20% EBITDA is the multiples which normally work on a tech kind of companies which uh, which uh, essentially have that. Uh, I would be seriously looking at the, the, the capability of that customer to stay with you. That would be the only risk I would see in the business because and how, how that book is very strong and, and committed. Uh, and uh, if, if I don't see that commitment in the book, uh, that, uh, that that saying single customer because a business is just based on one customer. You know, I sold one company which was having only five customers, and five customers they used to do their HR, HR uh, some kind of work, uh, but uh, and they lost three out of them uh, by by no time. You know, we were in the still phase of valuation, and I think they were rushing it because they wanted to. They were having some internal signals. They lost three of them, and there was nothing left in the business. I mean, there were two only two companies, and billing significantly changed and went down to 30-35% of revenues and hence they had to cut down a lot of cost and the negative growth started to happen. So uh, I, I would see uh, your business is fabulous, 30% uh, performance, 30% uh, EBITDA or 10 crores. Uh, it's an easy easy case of a, a you know a good valuation, very, very good valuation. I would, even if a conservative stage, if 3 crore was a profit uh, at a better level, then I, even if I take this at a very conservative, it is a 50-50 crore kind of a value business. Uh, but uh, the risk is that you're sitting on one single customer. And uh, and from a risk viewpoint, if you see somebody putting 50 crores and, and these are normally not so much of a asset heavy businesses, uh, and they're relatively asset light businesses and 50 crores is going purely on a valuation. And if for reasons this customer goes away, uh, one, how, how 
interesting is the business which to acquire a new customer and second is uh, you know the risk is very high so i would i would write say uh, one uh, de risk yourself put more customers in place and lock your customers for a longer period and if you are able to demonstrate that then re valuation is absolutely reasonable the same person has also asked us to share an email of an advisor to speak to about raising equity from a pe for a tech company after strengthening the im yes other question was uh, i want to sell a food business before estimating price can you tell me uh, should i consider in general yeah yeah you should you should consider almost as i said i mean every business can sell it's just question of valuation uh, question of uh, what is the right valuation and uh, uh, please reach out to sonali and if you want to reach out to me i will put my email id you can just send a, a quick mail to me and and i will be more than happy to answer thank you very much thanks for your time today and uh, we'll continue to bring in uh, you know our fresh ideas on on these three subjects of investing scaling and and uh, evaluation uh, thank you very much thanks for your time thank you so thank much you. gorav sir thank you so much for your time and for another wonderful session thank you to all our attendees for being a part of this session we really hope you were able to add some value to your lives through this session and we'll see you next saturday at 3 pm for another session on uh, which will be on investing uh, in this business growth journey thank you so much